Good morning, Paul. Do I find you reading a book? Yeah, I thought it might help improve my sales technique. Let me see. Selling for morons. <laughs> How even a complete cretin can sell cars. <laughs> From the author of Management Tips for Halfwits. Yeah, yeah, I saw it on the shelf and I thought that's the book for me. It's very good, it's got lots of pictures in it. <laughs> you don't need that when you've got me, Paul. I wrote the book. It, it says Ron Higman on the cover. <laughs> oh, you know, you, you misunderstand me. I didn't write that book, though. I could have done. I should imagine that writing a book is very much like making love to a beautiful woman. First of all, make sure you've got some nice clean sheets and plenty of lead in your pencil. You might want to kick off with a prologue to warm her up and tease her with what's to come. But then you need to get stuck in and hammer away till you're right up to her appendix. Finally, finally, Paul, when you've expressed yourself, Sit back, light up your pipe, and if your wife asks you what you've been up to, make sure you've got your story straight. Right. So, we can get rid of that, and you can study me instead. I'll show you some of the tricks I've picked up over the years. Come on, Paul. Sell me a car. Right. Um, would you like to buy this car, sir? <laughs> Paul, can I uh, stop you there for a moment? That really wasn't very good, was it? <laughs> no. First of all, you need to subtly match your gestures and speech patterns to those of the punter. Forms an unbreakable bond. Oh, shall I copy you? Yes, yes. For instance, if the customer has their arms crossed, you might want to cross your arms. Okay, now, Paul, sell me this car. <clears throat> Can I interest you in its Allegro, sir? <laughs> yes, you see, Paul, in a subtle way, you're already starting to sound more dynamic. Yeah, I've got exactly what you want, sir. Class little number that'll drive the ladies wild. Excellent. You see, you don't need fancy books. There is nobody in the world who knows more about selling cars than me. Except me. Oh. Good morning, Jeff. How was your weekend? I don't remember much about it. It goes Swiss. <laughs> I went out for a drink straight after work on Saturday, and I finished about nine minutes ago. <laughs> Paul, be careful who you copy. <laughs> it is a powerful and potentially dangerous technique. Use it wisely. <laughs> Jeff, I really am going to have to put my foot down. I can't have you turning up for work drunk. I'm not drunk. You just said you've been drinking all weekend. I drunk myself sober. So you are drunk. Swiss, I'm not drunk, I'm merry. It's not Christmas, Jeff. You shouldn't be merry. I'm off the merry, Swiss. I don't just waste it all on Santa. <laughs> It's encouraging to hear. Swiss, who sells the most cars here? It's not you, is it? And it's not the boy wonder, little Lord Fauntleroy. <laughs> There's no need to be insulting. Paul is a very valued member of the Swiss Tony sales team. He's a child, Swiss. We shouldn't let you use the scissors unsupervised. <laughs> How am I ever going to sell this car if you persist in using it as a second home? The answer is, Swiss, you are never going to sell this car. This car is a monster. It should never have been made. The villagers and the burgomeisters should come up here with the flaming torches and burn this car to the ground. I'm serious, Jeff. Can't go on like this. Well, if you don't like it, I can always go back to BMW. OK. So why don't you, then? Because I took BMW as far as I could, and then I came to work for you as a challenge. I thought you left after you reversed the car through the showroom window, and then they asked you to wean to a specimen job. That was a completely unrelated incident. I am trying to run a sleek, modern car showroom here, Jeff. Swiss, if you want to run a proper car showroom which actually sells cars, then you need me. You've got a point, Swiss. He's our top salesman. Nobody asked for your opinion, Tiny Tim. <laughs> Filling my computer again? No. No. Morning, Miranda. How was your one day off? Oh, thanks. Not great. I had to go to the doctor's. Oh, well, nothing serious, I hope. But, uh, if it is, I'm not sure I want to hear about it. No, you're all right. You know that little problem I had I thought might be pie on? I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> I said to the doctor, I said, look, I'm really sore around the entrance to my bottom. I really don't want to hear about it. And he said to me, it's not an entrance, it's an exit. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth have you been up to? J -j 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 Jeff. I don't think we want to delve too deeply into Miranda's sore bottom. <laughs> Jeff, I do not accept that you are a better salesman than me. Well, I think if you look at the figures, Swiss, you'll see I've sold about 20 cars this last quarter. You're down to 15, actually, Jeff. Well, it's a quiet time of the year. Not for drinking, it isn't. <laughs> Why 
many cars have you sold? Oh, let me see. No, no, don't worry about that, Miranda. I think you're fine. None. You can... <laughs> Every car we sell... I sell. Every car sold... <laughs> ...is sold by Swiss Tony's Motors. I am Swiss Tony, ergo, I sell all the cars. Ergo, you don't. Tony Blair is the ultimate head of the NHS. You don't find him lancing boils down your local clinic, do you? <laughs> Who sells the cars? I am an enabler, Jeff. I enable things. Who sells the cars? 99% of car sales are made up here. In your case, 100%. <laughs> Look, forget the statistics, Jeff. That's all just spin. The fact of the matter is, I am a better salesman than you. Prove it. I've got certificates in my office. I've got geraniums in mine. It doesn't make me Alan Titchmarsh, does it? <laughs> Jeff. There isn't a car in this showroom that I couldn't sell. All right, sell the Allegro. You bought it. It's a bargain. I bet you £500 pounds you can't sell it by the end of the week. Well, I bet you can't. All right, Miranda, you're our witness. £500. You're all right. Uh, let's not uh, rush into anything here. You don't stand a chance. You've only got one technique, which involves comparing everything to making love to a beautiful woman. <laughs> it is an unbeatable technique. <laughs> I cannot think of a single person it would not work on. <clears throat> Hello, uh, I'd like to buy a car. <laughs> I'm going to the shops this lunchtime. Do you want to get you anything? Let me see. What do I need from the Marshall Vistas Retail Park? I've got all the mouse mats and trellis work I need. <laughs> oh, Paul, go to the wine warehouse and get me some vodka. Very set in crates. So? <laughs> but you're a pretty good salesman, Jeff. Have you ever thought how much better you'd be if you didn't drink? What? Don't ever say that. <laughs> Not even as a joke. What would happen to a bird if it stopped flapping its wings? It would fall out of the sky, wouldn't it? Smash itself to pieces. <laughs> Come in here, without drinking, all those people looking at me, Try and sell cars. <laughs> oh. You've confused me now. <laughs> I've never bought a car before. Oh, there's nothing to it, Simon. Buying a car is very much like making love to a beautiful woman. <laughs> that is to say that um, you... Um, what denomination are you, Simon? Uh, Anglican. Anglican. Now, you'll have to forgive me. My theology is a little bit rusty, but... Uh, are Anglicans allowed to bury the bishop? <laughs> uh, sink the squirrel. I'm sorry? Uh, baptise the hairy font. <laughs> Make love, Simon. Oh, yes, uh, you're, you're thinking of Catholic priests. Yes, yes, of course, yes. They're the ones who don't have sex. <laughs> well, not with adults, anyway. <laughs> oh, Miranda, Greg rang for you again. Are you trying to avoid him? Oh, he just won't get the message. I've ditched him and that's that. Mm. I thought he was quite nice. Yeah, he was too nice. I was bored, sick of him. Most nights I'd end up sitting on the washing machine. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Delicate. Rrrring <laughs> thing. Spin <laughs> cycle! <laughs> when you have a more fulfilling relationship with your household appliances, Paul, it's time to move on. Mm. Ruth, I didn't see you there. Uh, oh, Swiss is with someone, actually. Uh, right. Well, uh, so, what have you been up to lately? Me? Oh, no, 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 nothing much. I never do anything very interesting. I'm just, uh, me, you know, <laughs> Mrs. Swiss Tony. <laughs> just a uh, housewife, just, um, <clears throat> you know. Well, how's your course going? Oh, um, you know, uh, all right. Oh, you're doing a course? What, what is it? Assertiveness training. <laughs> <laughs> Tell it to me straight, Simon, and don't let me down here. Have you ever made love to a woman, beautiful or otherwise? Uh, well, uh, not as such. Christ on a bike, Simon, you're making this very difficult. <laughs> Sorry. OK, let's sort this out. Um, making love to a beautiful woman is very much like slipping into a nice warm bath <laughs> and being tickled and laughing a lot, although it's not necessarily funny. <laughs> this is like England beating Germany 5-1 or eating a great big delicious cream cake, or, or being stroked by a nice soft mink glove. <laughs> so, by extension, Simon, buying a car 
is very much like sitting in the bath eating a cream cake whilst being stroked by an England footballer wearing a mink cloth. <laughs> You've lost me. I've lost myself, Simon. <laughs> Listen, uh, uh, thanks for your help with this uh, car buying business. Obviously a bit more complicated than I thought. <laughs> no, 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 I can explain it better. Uh, it's like sneezing. Uh, maybe I'll come back another time. Can I get you a cup of uh, coffee or anything? Uh, no, no, I'm... <laughs> I'm all right, thank you. <laughs> Yea, though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, I fear no evil, because I have bought an Allegro. <laughs> Oh, look, I, I brought these for you. Don't let Swiss see. More chocolates of Lee. Why don't you just tell him you don't like them? I can't. Yes, you can, Ruth. Be assertive. Just say, I don't like chocolates. I don't like chocolates. Don't give me any chocolates. Don't give me any chocolates. Well, go on. I don't like chocolates. Don't give me any chocolates. Good. Now try. I hate Swiss. chocolates. I hate bloody Belgian chocolates. <laughs> you can shove your bloody Belgian chocolates up your... Ah, oh, piglet. <laughs> I see you've got the chocolates. Oh, yes, that's lovely, thank you. <laughs> Have you just sold a car? No, 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 he was just looking. I can tell time wasters a mile off. Nothing I don't know about this business. Cars are in my blood. It's a male thing. <laughs> just as women are only interested in fine wines and Belgian chocolates. <laughs> oh, what's the point, eh, Paul? Trying to explain anything to do with cars to the fairer sex is a complete waste of time. Now, the only thing they find interesting is airbags. <laughs> I cannot believe you can fit a whole airbag inside a steering wheel. You can't. <laughs> Never mind. So, what brings you to the coal face, Mrs. Pig? Not trying to spy on me, I hope? No. No, it, it, it's one o'clock, you know. Yes, yes, I know. And, and uh, we arranged to um, have a driving lesson. Oh, you have a driving lessons, Ruth? But well, I've seen you drive before, and you... No, 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 no. No. Will you stop doing that? <laughs> you are irritating the hell out of me. <laughs> yes, you've come in for your driving lesson, haven't you, darling? Yes, you know, I have to keep reminding her that the rearview mirror is not just for putting on your makeup. <laughs> go along then, let's go for your lesson. Oops, I nearly forgot your chocolates, darling. Thank you, darling. <laughs> You're doing very nicely. Now ease the clutch out just a little. Can you feel it when it begins to bite? You don't think that Jeff's a better salesman than me, do you? You know, I don't really know about cars, dear. Don't over-rev. You'll ruin the can belt. Indicate. Indicate. I'm going to prove to him that my technique is far superior. You must indicate, Tony. Please, Mother, I'm trying to concentrate. This will be a lot easier without you in the back. I'm sorry. I said I'd take it to the chemist. Your father's used up all my face cream. What you want your face cream for? To make a potato salad. <laughs> I thought it was mayonnaise. It should be locked up. Indicate. Don't over-rev, dear. Oh. Whoever heard of a car salesman who can't drive? Yes, well, maybe I could drive if I didn't have you blithering away in the back, Mother. Don't ever rev, dear. Will you stop telling me not to over rev? You sound like some form of demented parrot. Sorry. I know what I'm doing. You over rev. Oh, hell and damnation! <laughs> bloody cars. Oh, no, look, you're doing very well. We'll start again, won't we? No, we will not. There's something wrong with this car. I'm going to walk back from here. Oh, hello. What do you think? Oh, when I left yours, I saw this in a sale. Much better than a smelly old car. You've been to Crazy Allen's bicycle madhouse, you heretic. <laughs> Are you all right? I am, Anna. You are all right? You taking a piss? No. 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 No, it's a sales technique that Swiss showed me, right? You synchronise yourself to the other person and you create an unbreakable bond. Yeah, well, I don't want an unbreakable bond with you. All right? Oh, sorry, I just can't stop doing it. <laughs> I'm Swiss Tony. I am the best salesman. I can sell that car. It's bad enough Jeff and Swiss gone mad without you joining them. Yeah, I know. It's been quite a week, isn't it? Stop it! Sorry. Oh! Oh! Still, it's Saturday tomorrow, so I suppose we've only got one more day of them swinging their dicks at each other. Oh, that's not a nice image. You frightened me now. Hmm. Who do you think is bigger? I'm trying to get the image out of my mind, thank you very much. I should have nightmares. Hmm. Should I have a bet on it? No. Where's my bloody trimmer? What? For trimming my moustache. 
I cannot sell that car unless everything is just right. Shoes polished, tie pinned, moustache trimmed. I bet Jeff has hidden it, hasn't he, to try and sabotage me. Ed Ethan, sorry I borrowed them last night. This is my trimmer. <laughs> Could you not touch my trimmer? I have to be trimmed. Yeah, all right, keep your hair on. I was going out straight after work and I had to tidy up. <laughs> you look like I had a Yorkshire Terrier down my knickers. <laughs> Uh, it's all right, Randa, you, you keep it. I think I'm trim enough. I'm trim enough, aren't I, Paul? Yes, yes. Yes, good. Yes, now I have to get to work before, before Jeff gets here. He's here already, actually. What? He never gets to work on time. No, I know. He's taking his competition pretty seriously. Yeah, he came to work sober this morning. The cheat! <laughs> Morning, Swiss. The sun has got his hat on. <laughs> Is that right, Jeff? You have another drink this morning? No, nor last night. I didn't sleep a week! <laughs> Come on! Right, uh, there she is. Got um, steering wheel. <laughs> turns left, uh, turns right. Um, front seats, back seats. <laughs> Didn't have a drink last night. <laughs> um, child support. Door. That opens. <laughs> closes. Opens. <laughs> closes. Opens. <laughs> opens. <laughs> closes. I need a cup of coffee. Oh, so he's changed his technique, has he? He's sobered up. Well, I can change mine. <laughs> All I have to do is not compare buying a car to making love to a beautiful woman. It's not difficult. I can do it. I can sell a car. A customer comes in. I sell them a car. Hello, sir. Would you like to buy a new car? I just have to think of them as people. I can't do it. <laughs> Hi, customer Jeff. Saw him first. Hello, sir. Hello. Would you like to buy a car? Uh, maybe. Yes, you know, buying a car is like making love to a... No, it's not. <laughs> it's not at all like that. Buying a car is... Uh, a car is... Uh, buying a car is... Come this way, sir. I've got just a car for you over here. A, a car is... What is a car? <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Could have been made for you. Most people seeing a car like this are like over 50. Yeah, and old people are clever. There's a wisdom that comes of age. They know a good car when they see one. But it's not very, um, exciting. Oh, you want an exciting car? Oh, well, get yourself a Maserati then, with a loose wheel. And drive it 100 miles another wrong way up the M1. Right. <laughs> Listen to me, young man. Young person plus exciting car equals death. <laughs> Is that how you want to end up? Lying on the grass verge, with your legs cut off at the knee, the stereo embedded in your chest, still playing Robbie Williams, doing the bad impersonations of Frank Sinatra. <laughs> you want, hey? End your days in a wheelchair in a darkened room, watching your nan doing the garden out the window. You won't be able to help her. Is that what you want? If not, buy this car. Buy this car or wind up dead. <laughs> You can do it. You've just got to remember that buying a car isn't like making love to a beautiful woman. So what is it like? It isn't like anything. It's what it is. A car is a car is a car. It doesn't stand for anything else. So what is a car then? If it isn't like anything else, does it even exist? <laughs> if I don't sell the car, does that mean I don't exist? <laughs> Stop it. Right. Start again. Buying a car isn't like making love to a beautiful woman. So, what mileage does it do, then? How am I supposed to know? I don't even know what it is! <laughs> Hello, I was wondering if you could help us. I'm trying to buy a car. Uh, well, I'm not really a senior salesman, but I see what I can do. Paul. Ah, Swiss. Yeah, this guy wants some help. We will stop. <laughs> Will you stop talking in that idiotic voice and, and deal with it? 
want to. No, 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 just, 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 just go over there and show him some of those, those, um, what do you call it? Cars. Exactly, yes, cars. <laughs> I'm going to be a new man after reading this. Jeff doesn't stand a chance. Oh, masterful, oh, masterful. I can do it. I can do it. I'm sure you can. You know, Piglet, I've asked you before, and I'll ask you again. Who do you think's the better salesman, me or Jeff? Oh, I really couldn't decide, darling. You know, I sometimes think this assertiveness training course you've been doing is a complete waste of money. I mean, what if your life depended on it? What? Well, what if you're going to be executed if you couldn't make a choice? Executed by who? Well, I don't know, a Japanese prison guard with a big samurai sword. Why would I be a prisoner of the Japanese? It doesn't matter why you're a prisoner of the Japanese, just make a choice. Okay, Jeff. What? Well, he does sell more cars than you, doesn't he? You as well. This, um, this Japanese prison guard... Will you shut up about the Japanese prison guard? <laughs> Time is running out. I have to beat Jeff. We're like a couple of large beasts in a David Attenborough documentary. <laughs> Can't you picture it? Two huge, powerful bodies pounding into each other. Sweaty and violent. Steam rising from them as they go at it, full pelt. <laughs> Neither of them giving any quarter until one of them falls back exhausted. Yes. This book, Ruth, might just give me what I need to screw Jeff good and proper. <laughs> Once you've got your prospect in the funnel, you can move towards closure. <laughs> don't let up. You may withdraw slightly, oh. but only so you can thrust back in with even more vigor. I'm just going to go and do some laundry. Right. <laughs> to be a successful salesman, you have to know people. That's me. <laughs> you have to know what they want before they want it. And if you can give them what they want, they won't be disappointed. Swiss Tony never disappoints. It's half past twelve. <laughs> she shut her hand on the door again. Say your prayers, Allegro. God, Jeff, you look worse sober than you do drunk. I am drunk. Can't sell cars sober. I'm gloriously battered. <laughs> I've drunk a bottle of vodka, a litre of tomato juice, or I need some Tabasco and a stick of celery, I'll be a giant living Bloody Mary. So you're throwing in the towel, then? The towel? That went years ago. I've got flannel somewhere. So I win, then? I don't care. Just need to lie down somewhere dark. Then I'll sell the car. I'll sell all the cars. I'll sell you. I'll sell my teeth. <laughs> Just need the dark milk of sleep. <laughs> my job is all about putting the right car with the right person. I know cars. I know people. I know you, Bob. Brian. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, when you woke up this morning, you could have had no idea that today was the day you were going to buy yourself the car of your dreams. Yeah, I know. I came in here by accident. I was looking for Crazy Allen's bicycle madhouse. <laughs> but fate brought you here to this magnificent car. Yeah, I'm still not sure about the colour. <laughs> You're not buying the paint job, Brian. You're buying the car underneath. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll completely respread to the colour of your choice, free of charge. Whew. Well, that's enough for a car of you. Here, no, no, Brian, please. Here. Use my pen. Oh, there you are, Tony. This is where I work, Mother. Where did you expect me to be? Now, I need to talk to you about your father. You've really got to do something about him. I mean, this morning he tried to fry an egg in baby oil. Oh, dear, I can't think of anything worse. <laughs> and you obviously not tried his chicken curry made with deep heat. <laughs> I will deal with it later. I'm about to sell a car. 
But this is a horrible car. It's ghastly. Brian happens to like it. Well, I'm still not sure about the car. Don't argue with me, Brian. Sorry. <laughs> Tony, you do make such a silly fuss about selling these cars. It's my job, Mother! Well, it's a silly job. This isn't a good time. No, 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 no. This is a great time. A perfect time. There's never been a better time to buy this car. The car is yours. Name your price, Brian. Any price. Well, I don't know. I'm beginning to think there's something funny about it. There is. It's a horrible colour. Mm. Well, maybe I'll think about it. No, no, no. Just said that. Mother, make him stay. Stay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there is nothing funny about this car. Your car. Hi, I, I have dropped the price. I'll respread. I'll throw in our extended warranty. Look at it. It's a beauty. Rust free, low mileage, terrific condition inside and out. And there is enough luggage space in the boot for a family of six. <laughs> Good God. I died. Are you a refugee? Oh, mother is dead. What day is it? How long have I been in there? You have deliberately sabotaged my cell. Oh, come off it, Swiss. You never had a sale. Yes, I did, Brian. Br Br Brian, come back here. <laughs> I've been drinking turtle wax. <laughs> you just cannot accept that I am the better salesman than you, can you? Bollocks. <laughs> You're just a haircut. And you are a pathetic, drunken shambles of a man. You just cannot accept that I am a fanny wizard. <laughs> That's what this is all about, is it? Who's got the biggest todger? Who's is it if I've got some money on it? Oh, well, it won't be Tony's. Mother, please. <laughs> Admittedly, I haven't seen it since he was three. Do they grow? With well, a little encouragement. Oh. They're a drunk. A drunk just like my grandfather. Your grandfather? You leave my family out of this. <laughs> you big-nosed, balding loser. Oh, get out of it, you ponce. How dare you call me a ponce, you crapulous oaf. You ponce. I'll fire you. You can't fire me. I'm irresponsible. I can. No, you can't, you punts. You're fired. Punts. Fired. <laughs> what? I just thought I'd like to let you know I sold the car. You sold the brown monster. Punts. Yes. So that makes me a bigger man than both of you. So now I think I should take the afternoon off and go and do something manly. I'll go home, pop open a manly can of lager, and I'll watch Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Before you go... I'd just like to say, congratulations. Yeah. And I suppose that this means that, that I won the bet after all. What? Well, who was it, Paul, who taught you everything you know? Who is your guide, your mentor, your Obi-Wan Kenobi? <laughs> the Uncle Scooby to your Scrappy-Doo. <laughs> it's you, Swiss. You're still the king. As if it was ever in any doubt.